Hey everybody, welcome to Arbitrary Unions and Intersections with me. Today, all we're doing is taking more unions and more intersection, intersections, but we're gonna take a lot of them, so many, one might say arbitrarily many of them. Um, and the question is, well, how do you do that? And then uh, at the very end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce something that's like maybe a little bit of notation. Um, so hopefully today is not like a super intense day, but let's get started. Let's look at our very first example. I think that basically what we're going to do today is we're going to do a bunch of very specific examples and um, you're hopefully going to see the pattern to how, for how to deal with these. The very first one that we have is we want to find the union of these intervals where we're doing the union for everything one up to some arbitrary capital N, where capital N is coming from the natural numbers. So we're talking about first, we would have this interval. Next, we would have this interval. And then we would have this interval all the way up to some interval that we don't know, some capital N. So the key right here is to notice that our intervals are getting bigger. So this first one is contained in the second one, and the second one is contained in the third one, and that is contained all the way here in the very last one. And so they're all nested. And so what we need to do for our union is just look at the very largest one because he contains all of these guys previous. So our union here is just going to be negative n to positive n, where we're using the capital N. And the reason that it's good to like kind of think about that first is what if we wanted to look at infinitely many unions? So we're gonna go all the way up to infinity. Well, we know that the limit of n would just be infinity as n goes to infinity and the limit of negative n as n goes to infinity would be negative infinity. And then we just plug in that limit for our endpoints. So we would go to negative infinity, positive infinity, and hopefully me writing that makes you go, ah, don't do that. Remember, we can't equal infinity. We don't want to include infinity. That's like a topic for a much different, much higher course. <laughs> Including infinity, actually equaling infinity. That's not what we do here. Um, we cannot equal infinity. And so remember, you're always going to use those round brackets for infinity, even if we did start with the square brackets. OK, so that's basic um, union. Let's go ahead and do a intersection. So once again, I'm going to write this down up here just to help myself visualize. And so we're going to do intersection, same interval, and we're going to go up to capital N. So the intersection is everything that everybody has in common. So this one is the smallest and he's contained in all of these ones and so we can take our smallest interval because he's contained in all the other ones and say okay negative one to one is what everybody is going to have in common so now when we take an infinite intersection we don't care where this big one goes we only care about the smallest. So we only care about smallest for the intersections. So this guy can get as big as he wants. He could go all the way up to all of infinity to negative infinity, but we only care about what everyone has in common, which is that smallest one. And then we can leave a similar note here only care about largest 
for the union. And again, this is only because they're nested, they're contained inside of each other. Okay, so let's take this on a run again. Let's try a different set of ANs. We're going to do the interval 0 to 1 over n. And I am going to start again by writing out some intervals. So if n was equal to 1, then we would have n is equal to 2. So like this is a1, this is a2. Let's write out a3, 0 to 1 third. Now we have set containment going the other way. Now this one is the largest. And he's going to contain all of these guys. So when we look at the infinite union, we're going to say, OK, this one contains all of these ones. And so our union is going to be everything between everybody, which is just going to be the biggest one. Now remember, for intersections, we care about the smallest. So the question is, what is the smallest one doing? So we're going to take a limit. I'm going to say, well, let's figure out, essentially, if I get that big N back, so the smallest one would be this interval right here. And I need to know what this is doing as big N goes to infinity. So what does 1 over big N as N goes to infinity do? It goes to 0. So then we're left with, going to write something really bad. We're left with the interval 0 to 0. No, that's not an interval. That's just, um, the question is, is it just a single point? Is it just the point 0? No, because round means we don't include. So we're not including zero, which means we could, um, this endpoint can't get small enough to go pick up that zero. We already said on this side, we're not going to include zero. So that means we have the empty set. There's nothing in here. If, if I'd had square brackets, so this interval instead, then we would have taken a limit and gotten this. So we would be including zero on both ends of our interval. <laughs> and so that would be, that would turn into this. So if I had square brackets and I had included zero, I would have ended up with just the element zero in our intersection. But that is not the case. That is not what has happened. So what we had was the interval 0 to 0 with round brackets, which means we have nothing sitting in there. So this is bad notation. We don't write this. We write empty set. That is the conclusion. OK. Now let's try another one where we have some very interesting notation. Um, we have. A is an interval again. It's cool. But now we have this set lambda, which is equal to 1, 3, and 4. And we're going to union over the lambdas from the capital lambda. So reason I'm doing this is because it is notation that you guys need to know. It's like hard to like think about. And so we're just going to stay really simple for right now in hopes that um, I can prepare you for your futures where you have to look at this and make sense out of it. So let's dig into this. What is this trying to say? So this union of lambda in capital lambda just means that lambda is going to be equal to 1, 3, or 4. So our union is going to be between a1 union a3 union a4 it's a very complicated way to say that but trust me being able to do that arbitrary 
um, notation. It's really important later on. So then the questions are, well, what's A1, A3, and A4? So A1 is going to be the interval 1 to 2. A3 is the interval 3 to 4. A4 is the interval 4 to 5. So then the union is going to be this interval glued together with this interval glued together with this interval. I'm not looking for what's the biggest, what's the smallest, because these are not nested intervals anymore. So we don't, we don't look at biggest and smallest. We glue them together like we normally would. So that would be one, two, union, three, four, union, four, five. And if, let's say this was an exam and this is where you stopped, you'd get some of the credit, but like, you should know better. This stuff goes together. We can uh, pretty up this notation. There we go. We cannot pretty up this notation. There's nothing, there's no way to like more concisely write this. So we're done for the union. Okay, so intersection. Let's say we're gonna do the intersection between A1, A3, and A4. So this is when we want to know um, <clears throat> what all of our intervals have in common. So we look here, we look here, and we can say, oh, they have this four element in common. And then we look here at A1 and say, there's no four. So they don't have any elements in common at all. Their intersection is going to be the empty set. Okay. So again, today was mostly just um, some new notation. It was dealing with some, oh my goodness, slide back. There we go. It's dealing with some uh, infinitely many unions and intersections. Yes, I need some explanation with this, but this is all the explanation that I really need between there and there. Like if you can show me things are large over here and they're getting smaller as we go this way. And then you take a limit to justify what's happening to your endpoints appropriately. That's all the justification that I would look for on these sorts of problems um, when I'm trying to ask you to like actually calculate something. So a little bit of justification needed, but not a whole lot. Okay. And then I think that's all I have for right now. And I will see you all next time.